Hey, hey, welcome to the TomTech channel again. This is episode number three. Uh, thank you for all the subscribes and likes of the previous episodes. In this episode, I'm going to show you the Vitamix blender, which is a very high quality and popular bl blender made in USA. I have one problem with it. I'm going to go through that and maybe fix it and at least see how it works inside. We're going to take it apart. And yeah, thank for the subscribes. The heart rate episode was very popular and I had plans to make more episodes and one would be the optical heart rate. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. When I have time in the future, I'm going to make an episode of optical heart rate and many other topics also. But today the Vitamix blender. So let's see what's the problem. My problem is with the speed control. Sometimes at the low speed setting, there's a contact problem and the speed might suddenly jump up. So now I'm going to disassemble the Vitamix blender, but please don't do this at home. At least remember to unplug it. But I don't recommend anybody starts to repair the Vitamix. They have a very long warranty, so this would be covered by warranty probably. So you don't need to fix it. So this part comes off just by pulling. You can do this when you need to clean underneath. And then there are four screws to open here. Then you need to pull out this knob. This you can also do at home if you need to clean. All right. Then get the screws out of four of them and carefully pull it open. But please don't do this at home. Like that. The motor is in the top part and there's a circuit board on the bottom part. All right, so here's the motor. The motor has a centrifugal fan on the bottom part that will keep air running through here and cooling down the motor so it won't burn up hopefully and it's a brushed motor the same kind you can find in vacuum cleaners for example so it has this kind of brushes and those tend uh, to wear, wear out at some point but um, it's a very long brush i have at least half an inch more to go and I've used this for several years, maybe three years, four years, I don't remember. So they seem to last very long. So no problems there. And here in the base of the Vitamix blender, there's a circuit board. This is the speed control units for the motor. And it looks like it would be a switch mode controller. That means it's switching on and off in very rapid uh, rate, the motor. So the average power will be something you can adjust. And finally, here on the other side, there's a black box that's only glued by tape to the base. Hopefully it will stick there. And this is a filter unit that will uh, filter away interference from the motor and the switch mode controller so it won't interfere in your radio or anything else. And this is the potentiometer that you adjust the speed. Let's take it out. Here's the potentiometer. It's the same kind of component you can find in your volume controls in different stereos or radios. But fortunately you can open this component by bending the plastic parts, but please don't do this at home. It's very easy to break it. So this is how this potentiometer works. Um, this is the shaft that is turned around when you turn the knob. And there are three metal fingers going around. And the bottom plate, it's a circuit board. And one of the fingers is rotating in the middle part that is uh, just a metal part. And the one wire goes to that one. And two other fingers are sliding over this black part, which is, that is probably carbon. So if you turn fully clockwise, the current needs to go through a long path of carbon high resistance and fully anti-clockwise the 
current goes through a short path of uh, carbon so it will be low resistance and anything in between. Now you can imagine if you turn the knob back and forth many times uh, the carbon might uh, wear out and get some damage and in that case you can't do anything you have to replace the potentiometer but uh, if it's only dirty or something you might have a bad contact and then it might help using rubbing alcohol to clean it out like this and you can see on the cotton swab there's a little bit uh, black stuff so it was dirty you can also clean out the contacts Another problem that might happen is that uh, these metal fingers are bent so they are not pressing hard enough against the carbon. Then you might try to bend them uh, so they are contacting the carbon again. Now let's take a quick look at different models of potentiometers. Now this is probably the most common potentiometer. It's based on carbon, it has three terminals, it has some shielding here but it's not completely uh, tight so dust can go inside and make some problems and it might, the carbon might wear out. This is the same type but there's two sets of um, contacts so there are two potentiometers that are ganged. This is used in stereo volume controls for example so you can adjust the volume of the left and right channels simultaneously. Now here's a very modern and uh, good quality potentiometer. It's completely sealed from the outside, so no dirt can get inside and cause some, any trouble. And the track is not carbon, it's based on ceramic metal, or some models have uh, conducting plastic. Uh, that's better than carbon because they don't wear out so quickly and it's much better quality. And here's an interesting model of a potentiometer. You can actually turn this around 10 turns. So this kind of potentiometer is very expensive, but you can use this for very accurate adjusting of some, some things. Usually these are used in laboratory equipment or such. And finally, a sliding potentiometer. The operating principle is the same as a rotating potentiometer, but with this one you can slide this wiper on the track and the track can be carbon for example. Now let's do some experiments. Let's make our own potentiometer. What you need is a carbon pen. I need to cut away the wooden outer part and just leave the carbon that is inside. All right, here's my demonstration setup. Let's do this experiment. One way to use a potentiometer is as a variable resistance. I have a voltage coming through these two wires, blue and yellow. One goes to this uh, carbon bar I got from the pen. And the other one goes through the lamp and another wire to the carbon rod. And now there are two wires going to this uh, imaginary potentiometer. This is just like in the Vitamix. So two wires, two wires going to the potentiometer. And if the wires are close to each other, the lamp is uh, shining brightly. But then when I slide the other wire further away, so there's more carbon in between, there's a higher resistance and the lamp gets uh, weaker. So this way you can adjust the brightness of the lamp. Longer carbon, more resistance, less light. Shorter distance of carbon, lower resistance and more light. The resistance uh, tries to resist the current going through the lamp that makes it uh, less bright when it's getting less current. Another way to use the potentiometer is uh, radiometric use. 
that means a ratio of the input voltage is uh, output from the potentiometer. In that case, I need to connect these two wires with the voltage to both ends of the carbon rod. Ah. Like that. Now there's a voltage over this carbon rod. And then I need a voltmeter. I have two wires to the voltmeter. I will connect the other wire, the blue one, to the ground like that. So now I have three terminals connected to the potentiometer or carbon bar in this example. One is the ground terminal, one is the input voltage terminal and the third one is the center tap that you can slide. And now let's let's see what happens. If the center tap is close to the bottom part or the ground terminal, the voltage is low. Then when I slide it to this end, it becomes higher. And in the middle, the voltage is half of the input voltage. If I slide it one quarter down from the top, the voltage is three quarters of the input voltage. If I slide it one quarter to the ground, the output voltage is one quarter of the input voltage. So this is the ratiometric use of a potentiometer. You can adjust the output voltage based on the input voltage. And this is exactly the same principle how an audio volume potentiometer works. You have an audio signal coming in and the ratiometric mode of the potentiometer scales that audio signal to the output so you can reduce the volume. So now let's try the audio volume control experiment. I have an audio amplifier and my mobile phone, phone as a music player and let's try this uh, carbon rod as a potentiometer in between if you can adjust the uh, audio volume. So now I have connected the audio output from the mobile phone to the carbon rod. Negative side to one end and the positive side to the other end. And then the audio amplifier is connected negative side to the same negative side from the uh, mobile phone, audio output, and the input to the audio amplifier is the sliding contact that I will slide across the carbon bar. So let's start the music and amplifier. When slide is close to the ground, there's very little volume. But when I slide it up closer to the positive end, there will be more volume. So that's the do-it-yourself potentiometer. So that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe so you don't miss my next episodes. There will be some heart rate topics coming up. So, and give a thumbs up if you like this video. And now you can go and make your own potentiometer. See you later. Bye.